One of our good customers has brought another one of his Porsches for us to work on today. Uh, if you want to check it out, we worked on another one. We did some paint stuff on it. Uh, we have two videos of that one. Uh, today, on this one, we're going to be putting coilovers on it. And the coilovers on it, we'll talk about them in a little bit. This is where you're going to be judgmental and everything. But he has five Porsches. So it's just a daily driver. It's just to go have fun with. And the other one that he did some paint work on is going to be like a track toy. Uh, let's go judge the coilovers. These are Godspeed Max coilovers. Uh, sure. It's a Porsche. Sure, Godspeeds aren't an amazing, they're not Olins or whatever. Honestly, I don't really care for Olins. They're really expensive for basic coilovers in my mind. Uh, you can get coilovers from other places like Fortunato for like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars less than Olins and they perform just as well, if not better. Uh, as for this one, like I said, it's his daily driver. We talked about getting Olins. He was prepared to get Owens, but they're going to have to be rebuilt at the same time these are. You can buy three of these sets or more for one set of Owens, and each time the Owens get rebuilt, it costs almost as much as a set of these. So there's no real point for a daily driver to spend that much money unless you just want to brag. This is actually the second set I've installed on his cars. Uh, the first set was actually the one that Fred painted. Um, so these are, I mean, they're nice. They have the right adjustments for uh, spring pressure or preload, height adjustment. Um, they come with new tie rod ends because the uh, old ones are a different length for when you adjust it. Um, and the rear ones, where is it? On these, I'm gonna show you later, but uh, you can easily get to the front and the back of this hole. These are the rears and this goes to the rear sw uh, sway bar end link. So honestly, like sure, Godspeeds are cheap and you know, whatever, but with coilovers, if you're not spending two grand plus on a coilover, they're all the same. I've had uh, Tanes or TNs or whatever you want to call them, and they feel the same as K-Sports or Godspeeds. It's really how you set them up that makes them ride really well, and unless you're you know, some time attack monster or, you know, racing for the green flag or the checkered flag, you're not going to notice the difference between these and Olin's on everyday roads. The way I start doing coilovers is I measure the uh, corners at the ride height that it's at. That way, when I put the coilovers on, I know how much I'm lowering the car and I can also say how uneven the car was so I know how perfect I have to make it, where some cars are really wonky and other cars are dead nuts so and this one is 26 and a half this one is 26 and 5 8 26 and a half 26 and 5 8 <laughs> in the front here I'm just gonna have to take off the plastics and we can get to the top of the strut through here. I love how simple these things are. If this was like a Lexus or a Nissan, there'd be like a hundred screws or broken clips or any of that stuff for these. For these cars, it's just one screw and the plastic is well made and put where it needs to be. The nice thing about this customer is he keeps everything insanely clean, uh, so I'm not going to get very dirty. He even had one of his cars uh, dry ice blasted, and I will say, seeing it in person is nuts. I know the videos are really cool, but it's just stupid in person. <laughs> this is the one thing, if you don't know about Porsches, uh, that sucks. I, I understand the idea. It's just really annoying once all of them are off because the wheel will literally just fall. There's nothing to catch it. And as you can see, with this hundred plus thousand mile Porsche, it is not dirty at all. This is like most 5,000 mile cars are this dirty. I'm gonna explain what I have to do 
because this strut slides into the knuckle. You can see it actually comes very far down. So we have to get the knuckle off of the strut, which on this means taking the entire knuckle out of the car. Sure, it's excessive, but this actually comes apart really nicely. It's not very difficult to take it apart. Um, so I'm gonna start with the wires and really all they do is unclip. You can see in here. So we have the two like wheel speed and ABS sensors, right? Or whatever sensors are under here. So this is like the sliding clip and then you just pull them out. If all clips were like this, we'd have no wars. So now that the strut is uh, ready to come out with just the three nuts up top, uh, essentially all we did was we took off the brake caliper, which is just the two large Allens that go down under the knuckle. These were the wires that we took off, uh, brake pad sensor and ABS sensor. Uh, the brake line, we have it hung, that way we don't have any issues with the wires or anything like that. Um, the axle is out. It is a chintzy one, but it's four wheel drive, so this is technically like the rear of the car on most of them. Uh, lower ball joint, knock that out, tie rod out, and then that's it. I already took out the uh, uh, sway bar end link as well. Um, so this is what you need to have off to get these out. So we'll lower it, get the top off, put the new strut in, and I'll show you the uh, preload adjustments and everything for that. Ah, let's go get the new one. They always come with tools, the little spline wrenches, and uh, these are the Allen wrenches to set the, uh, the coils, because this one doesn't have a secondary one. It has an Allen that tightens and snugs it up. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to actually loosen this, and we're going to measure the spring with no pressure on it. And whatever the spring is, what I do for most everyday cars is I do either a 16th or an eighth inch of preload, which is essentially you taking a six inch spring and shrinking it a 16th or an eighth of an inch. And by shrinking it, you give it like a little bit more preload. The spring won't be free with any of uh, movements or whatever. So spring pressures, right? So they have the, you know, 6K, 12K springs. Um, that's per centimeter. And like if you do, you know, the American measurement is pounds, right? So it's like a 500 pound spring. That's 500 pounds of pressure per inch. So if you're at two inches, it's now a thousand pounds of pressure. So if you shrink that to half an inch before the car's even on there, you're at 250 and the spring is what cushions it. So it, as, it, as it squeezes down, it gets stiffer, which is what keeps you from bottoming out or you know hitting the bump stop or anything like that. But doing the preload to a 16th or an eighth gives you a nice comfy ride because you have a lot of the spring to use and it makes sure that the spring isn't jostling around in here because a lot of people don't know this is not how you adjust ride height on a coilover like this. This is only for the spring pressure. This is how you adjust ride height. So if you're moving this to try to raise or lower the car, you're already doing something wrong and it's gonna make the car ride horribly. It's a set key. That way, once uh, since there's only one of these, there has to be a way of keeping this from moving while you're driving around in the car. And when there's two of these, I brought the hammer over because like on this one, me pushing on it is going to get it tight. I use this and hammer it down and that gets it much tighter than I could because active suspension is only good on cars with really expensive suspension and actual active suspension. So we're going to see what this spring measures to. So it looks like the base of it is a 16th under six inches from there. So we'll go up to five and seven eighths from five and 15 sixteenths. I would use the, the millimeters, but I hate fractions, but this is easier for me. So all we do is spin this up and crush the spring until it's at our desired height or pressure. So that is gone too far a little bit. And the nice thing is when you measure one spring, the other spring is gonna be the same. So you'll be able to 
check and see if the preload is the same. Yeah, there, now we're at five and seven eighths. So let me snug this up. And as for the height, um, we're gonna be playing with it. So you can adjust the height one before you put it in the car, or you can just put them in the car as they come, measure it, and then go up from there. Because there are times where this is too low, there's times where it's too high. It all depends on what your goal is for ride height. All right, this one is what I would set it to out of the box. So we can thank Godspeed for at least having the same mindset as I have. So when you're putting in struts that have an adjustable camber plate on top, you want to make sure that this is actually moving in the direction that you need to because these three are all the same. So if you put it in this way, it's now a caster adjustment instead of a camber adjustment. So this is how this one goes in. As you can see, these are slotted and that's actually an OEM camber adjustment. But since he's getting an alignment, because we don't have an alignment machine here, we're just going to get it close and the alignment place will set everything where it needs to be. The last thing I gotta do is put the sway bar end link on, but I'm not going to do that until the other coilover is in because the sway bar is still attached on that side, so I'm not gonna get this to pull up where it needs to be for the adjustment here. Um, but everything is tight. Uh, it's essentially ready for the wheel. I'm just gonna leave it off for now until we're ready to put the car down. So let's go get the other side in and then we'll step to the back. Now that the front is where I want it before we start adjusting ride height to get what, exactly what we want, gonna come back here, do the rear. Um, this one, I at least don't have to take off the hub. Uh, as you saw, like I said, it's not that bad. It's just big stuff. Um, the only thing back here is the rear sway bar end link. Um, I'll probably show you that. It's horrible. I don't know who thought of it. And then we gotta go up inside of the car behind the seat and that's where there's, uh, it's two or three bolts. This is the rear sway bar end link. There isn't a nut on the inside here. It's a welded on piece. So you actually have to unthread using the, the nut on the end of the little tie rod here, the little ball joint here. So you actually sit there and spin this until it's out. When removing this, the suspension is going to be pushing down because the control arms were tightened as they should be with weight on the car. So to get this bolt out without fighting it or messing up any of the threads, I'm going to take our screw jack here and push up on the strut to relieve pressure on this because right now they're fighting each other and I can't get it out. All right, so here's how you get the Bose speaker out of the back of these things. The speaker covers pop off. And it's very nice. I actually only had to pry it very gently. I'll show you on this one. But it pops off and there's a T30 underneath it. So I haven't tried it yet. It might be, yeah, it's, it's tight, but you can get it with your hand. But yeah, this is how it comes off. So essentially just a pry tool behind it and then light push, light push, and it's out. No broken tabs, no nothing. They just click on really nicely. I've, at first, I was a bit worried that Porsche had forsaken me and their easiness, but they haven't. It's still good. So once those screws are out, you should be able to just pull it forward slightly as such, and then we'll get it up and out of the way. And they were nice enough to give us, where is that? There it is. A very long connector. We are, there we go. That's undone. We'll set this aside for now. And then uh, from what I was seeing, it's best to try to get these up around the carpet before we pull the carpet up, but I will see what looks easiest here in a minute. Now that the top three bolts are loose, the bottom bolt is loose, all we really have to do is pry the base of it out of the knuckle. 
So it'll just go back a little bit. And then once it gets all the way back, there it is. So for the rear, it's the same idea. We have to measure it, make sure that they're both the same preload. This one, however, doesn't have a lock screw because there's two of them. So we're gonna be using these to break them loose and then snug them up. And last thing will be the hammer and the uh, screwdriver to make sure that these are really tight because we don't have an Allen. So I'm gonna get that taken care of. We'll put them back in the car. Almost got the wheels all the way back on. Then we're gonna snug them up and we're going to check what ride height we're sitting at now. That'll give us the fine adjustments that we gotta make to get it all where it needs to be. And if you happen to notice the lovely background noise that we have, uh, that would actually be Fred. He's in there spraying. And more recently, he's in there or someone's in there spraying every day. So. Uh, be on the lookout for some future paint videos because we've done a few of them. Um, but Fred's been busy. I've been busy. We're staying busy. I know what we're going for, so we saw like 26 and a half. We're going for around 25. The jouncing, granted it's not a lot, is just to try to get it to be even. Because no matter what, if you pick a car up off of its suspension, it takes a while for it to settle back down. So we're gonna try to get it close to 25 and it will settle, but it's only, it might be at most like a quarter inch down with these coilovers. My guess is it might be like an eighth inch of settling, but let's measure it and see where we're at. Yeah, 24 and 5 eighths. So with our start, didn't really matter, but what we're at now, because the front is about half an inch or so lower than the rear, when we raise the front, the rear will most likely lower. So this 16th, which, you know, it's on either side of the car and whatnot, you'll probably never see. I'm still going to raise this up a 16th. That way, hopefully the rears will be even. And we're going to raise these up, was it three eighths and uh, half an inch. And we're gonna see if that will either hopefully keep the 25, because there's already a lot of weight back there, um, or if we have to readjust the rears to bring them back to 25. So. It is kind of a teetering game with this to make it perfect, but I've gotten to where I can usually do it in two to three passes of adjusting. So we'll see what happens here. After that, we're gonna do the sway bar end links, and then we're gonna do a makeshift alignment. I'll show you how to do that. And because he's gonna go get an uh, uh, actual, like, you know, computer alignment, which is better than I can do by eye. But at least with what I do, he's not gonna destroy his tires before he gets the alignment. So as for adjusting this, how I do it with most coilovers. Some of them it changes, but most of them, because I want half an inch on this, I can actually adjust half an inch and it'll get me really close or exactly a half an inch higher in the car because we're not changing preload. So the spring is always gonna act the same. This is literally just how much height we want. So essentially before I loosen anything here, cause we're only gonna be loosening the bottom one, take my tape measure and measure what we have, which that looks like five eighths of an inch. And we want half an inch. So then we're gonna go down to one and an eighth. When adjusting coilovers, once this one is broken loose, you turn the top one. And the top one you'll see actually turns the, the whole strut. So it just spins up. And you don't have to loosen your preload. You don't have to do anything with that. You don't have to unbolt it from the, the mount and this will give you, if you can find the hole, um, everything to get it to the right height. So this is just a time consuming point where I'm going to move it a bit, measure it, and then move it a bit, and then measure it until I get to the desired height I want. Ooh, so close. So now that I have this exactly the right, or the, the height that I want, we're going to set this. And that's with the flat head, have it on the way to where it's tightening. in a good old whack. So that isn't going to come loose. Hopefully we're going to uh, measure for the last time, but we'll see how close it is and then do some final adjustments. This one came out to be, oh, 25. 
25 and maybe a 16th? It's close. 25, 25 and maybe a 16th. I'm gonna call that good. Uh, you'll never notice the difference there. And uh, yeah, so two try, well, I guess one try, because the first one was just putting them on the way that they came out of the box. And now we're at the proper alignment. I'm gonna put it back up, do the uh, sway bar end links, and really you just gotta make sure that they're the right length either side and the sway bar is straight um, with the suspension loaded. And then after that, we're gonna do our little makeshift alignment. I'll show you that. I probably won't show you the sway bar end links. You've seen enough suspension and they're just links. Two ends, two nuts, we're done. It is now time to do the last part so that he can take the car home and then get it aligned later. What I do is I bring it down, make sure the steering wheel looks as center as possible, and then I raise it up. I pick one wheel to be my straight wheel. I kind of eyeball it looking down the side of the car, and whichever one I make the straight wheel, I start to adjust the other one based on the measurement from the front of the tire to the other one, and then from the back of the tire to the other one, and that'll give me my basic straight alignment. And then he'll go take it, it'll be done the way that it needs to be and everything after that, but like I said, we're just trying to make sure he doesn't destroy a tire on his trip home. So now is when I would come over here and I would look down the side of the, or the, side of the car at the tire, and if I look at this one, kind of hard to see but if you look straight down I can actually tell that it's a little towed out so this one will have to get pulled in a little bit let's go see what the other side looks like this one also looks towed out so if you look at it you know from this way to this way you can see that the front of the tire is further out than the back of the tire when you're looking straight down the car so what I'm gonna do now is loosen one of them and adjust that one to what looks straight and then once it looks straight, I'll set it and I'll start doing the other side with the measuring. So this is the outer tie rod. It's what you use to adjust the toe of the wheel. And you crack this nut loose because this is like the lock nut on it. And then spinning the little inner tie rod. Yeah, I don't know if you can see my finger right there. Um, the little inner tie rod will actually thread in or thread out to move the tire the way that you need it to go. So I have this one adjusted and it's as straight as my eyeball tells me. So I'm going to tighten this one up and then we're going to measure and see what I have to do for the other side. So what I'm measuring is the front of the wheel from one edge over there to the same edge over here and I'm looking at my millimeters. So I've got 135.1 centimeters, right? Because the little tiny ones are millimeters. So I got 135.1 centimeters and on the front, which I'm actually surprised with this. But the so same spot over there, come over here, and we are at 135. So I'm going to tighten this up and we're done. I don't know how I got one side to be adjusted to exactly what the other one is, but I'm not going to complain. Right front is 24 and 15, 16. So now that we have what they settled to, and he also drove it home and it needs to go up a little bit, I know where I can adjust up from here, and that should at least give us the settled measurement that we're going to need when we get it up and down. So um, I'm gonna figure out exactly what I have to move each one. He's gonna clean up some more. Like we said, he keeps everything very clean. Um, and then we're gonna put some spacers on it and adjust the coilovers finally and should be all happy for his alignment tomorrow. So we're gonna raise it up. Um, he figured out that the uh, European ones came at a stock height of 25 and a half in the front, 25 and three quarter in the rear. So it's a little higher than what we initially set it at. So that's what we're going to go for as our height that we, are, that we want. We had to actually do slightly less than what we originally thought because the coilovers for this car 
don't allow the front to go up that high. We didn't have enough threads with the preload we have selected. So this one we're sitting at 25 3 8 or 7 16 somewhere around there, which is what I was going for. 25 and a quarter, 5 16 25 and 5 8 25 and 5 8 So, we'll call that good. He's gonna go get it aligned, and then now he probably won't scrape in his driveway, but that's how you uh, adjust and install coilovers on a 996-911. Thank you.